For descendants of West and Central Africans, the Dark Ages can be said to have begun around the 16th century as the enslavement of African people from these regions began to pick up steam. The chaos that ensued brought about the inhumane transport of millions of Africans from various backgrounds. Given this history, resistance to enslavement was inevitable, but not many people could have imagined the formation of an African kingdom in South America. What up African world, it's Home here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like full access to courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. The Haitian Revolution is by far the most glorious moment in the history of Afro-descended people in the Americas and the Caribbean. Haiti is a nation that was formed by the successful rebellion of African men and women who were formerly enslaved by the French. This was the only successful slave rebellion in human history that went on to form a lasting state. However, some people aren't aware of the fact that Haiti was not the first African or Afro-descended state to exist in the New World founded by former enslaved people. Most of the Africans during the Atlantic slave trade arrived in South America, especially during the 16th and 17th centuries. Brazil has the largest Afro-descended population outside of the African continent itself and it was there that the most significant kingdom was formed by African people. Although previous arrivals of African people are suspected to have arrived in Brazil, the first known and documented Africans reached there in 1552. Upon their arrival, African people played a crucial role into the development of Brazil. Some Africans even fought to liberate the Brazilian colony from other European intrusion, the most famous of them being Henrique Diaz, known for his black regiment who defended the colony against the Dutch. Despite his involvement in Brazilian history, there remains still a more elevated champion of African people, a man who literally became ruler of an African kingdom in the country, a man named Ganga Zumba. But before we get into that, we have to learn a little about the history of uprisings in Brazil, which led to the rise of Ganga Zumba. According to perhaps the most accepted description of Brazilian uprisings, rebellions of enslaved Africans took about three forms. Active resistance, which consisted of fugitive slave settlements called culembos, attempts at seizures of power, and armed insurrections with the goal of not freeing enslaved people, but improving the conditions. The most frequent in use before the 19th century was the Culumbos, or settlements of enslaved Africans in the forested regions of Brazil. These Culumbos are of considerable interest to African history enthusiasts because these runaway communities took the memory of their collective past to form a kingdom. These kingdoms reflected the diversity of the Africans in language and culture. One of the more interesting aspects of how the Culumbos grew was their social requirement for becoming a full citizen in the community. Once you entered the Colombo, you still remained enslaved amongst other Africans until you went out and retrieved other enslaved Africans from the Portuguese. Now, apparently this wasn't a consistent policy, but in general it was upheld. The first recognized settlement began in Pernambuco. As the Dutch and Portuguese were fighting in that area, it created opportunities for enslaved Africans to flee. Many of them began to do so, creating the Columbos. However, even before the Dutch took Pernambuco, enslaved Africans still managed to escape and form settlements. The Columbos became so successful and widespread that Africans began raiding local towns. Before the major settlements of the Columbos, the early hideouts were called Mocambo, in or around 17th century Brazil. The word itself reflects the origin of the primary ethnic group of Africans in that region, as Mukambo means hideout in the Mbundu language of Angola. The settlement at Pernambuco is believed to have begun in or around 1605, and it became the most dominant and the most powerful of all the Colombos. According to the sources, the Colombo at Pernambuco maintained its strength by providing food as well as security 
for the inhabitants, most of whom were Africans who had various skills and were tillers of land. They planted nearly every kind of vegetable and knew how to store them against wartime and winter. But this is where the Colombo takes on a different form once we learn about the state of affairs within the settlement. All the inhabitants of the Palmeiras Colombo considered themselves subjects of a king who was called Ganga Zumba, which means Great Lord, and he is recognized as such both by those born in Palmares and by those who joined them from outside. He has a palatial residence, castles for members of his family, and is assisted by guards and officials who have by custom castles which approach those of royalty. He is treated with all respect due a monarch and all the honors due a lord. Those who are in his presence kneel on the ground and strike palm leaves with their hands as a sign of appreciation of his excellence. They address him as majesty and obey him with reverence. He lives in the royal enclave called Makoko, a name which was begotten from the death of an animal of the site. This is the capital of Palmares. It is fortified with parapets full of caltrops, a big danger even when detected. This very descriptive account about the settlement of Colombo of Palmares is no doubt a description of a kingdom with a respected ruler, officials, palace, and fortifications. The way these Africans came together to form a kingdom in the middle of South America with little to no resources is very impressive in and of itself. One of the ways in which Ganga Zumba's kingdom was able to survive was because of the trade-like relationship he maintained with local towns in the region. The best use of this relationship was the information the townspeople would give Ganga Zumba concerning future Portuguese attacks. This was invaluable as it concerned the survival of the kingdom. Ganga Zumba constantly sued for peace anytime a new Portuguese governor was installed, sending official envoys. Even though brief agreements were made, the Portuguese viewed them as a threat. It was obviously a conflict of interest. The Portuguese made several attempts to take the kingdom of Ganga Zumba, but all were inconclusive. Six military expeditions went to the African Kingdom, costing the Portuguese a lot of money, time, and lives. Ganga Zumba remained undefeated by the end of 1686. It became increasingly clear that the Portuguese colony of Pernambuco could not deal with Ganga Zumba out of its own resources. And so, in 1687, a new governor of Pernambuco allied with mercenaries of mixed Portuguese and native ancestry who were experts at jungle warfare. Their leader wanted to destroy the kingdom for a price. Despite losses in the jungle, the mercenaries finally reached the capital and destroyed it. The legend of the Palmares Colombo and the kingdom was no more. Despite the end of the kingdom, one can't help but respect how these Africans not only made a way out of no way, but were able to defend themselves for quite some time with very little resources, respectable allies, or significant economic support. An incredible accomplishment for this African kingdom in Brazil was its ability to transfer a central African political system into the heart of Brazil, governing numerous African ethnic groups and other Latinized people under one goal and system. And once again, this survived for nearly a century against not only one, but two European powers, the Dutch and the Portuguese. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.